and now we're beginning a detailed walking tour of the fascinating old quarter of Hanoi, Vietnam. It's a remarkably well-preserved neighborhood and it's alive. It's filled with people, mostly locals and of course there's some tourists, but this is really an authentic local Vietnamese place. It's very much a neighborhood where the people live, they work, and they play, and they eat. You'll see people out on the streets at the little sidewalk restaurants on every corner, and there are these inviting open shop fronts. It's a continuous stretch of open shops for the whole neighborhood of the old quarter. The busy life on the streets is something that we really don't see much of in the Western world. There are just People everywhere, sitting, eating, drinking, talking, having a good time and socializing. The old quarter of Hanoi is one of the most special places that you'll ever see in any of your travels. You don't find vacant buildings or vacant shop fronts. It seems like the economy here is doing quite well. And of course that's partly thanks to tourism. There are, after all, tourist shops here in the old quarter. There's tourists walking around ready to spend their money and get some good values. But again, it's the local life in the streets that makes the old quarter really something special. However, here's an urgent suggestion if you would like to come and see the old quarter as it is now. You better come soon because there are plans to clean up and modernize the old quarter. The Hanoi government does want to make some serious changes to the old quarter. They're concerned about the overcrowding, the old buildings, and this is justified. Some of the buildings are falling down and population density is higher than Manhattan, even though the buildings are much lower. But it's a bit worrisome because you want to retain this special old historic character and not modernize the place to make it like any other city in the world. The Old Quarter is a unique place, and right now, its fate lies in the balance. Oh, the government has plans. They want to remove about half the population or a third of the population and relocate them to more modern homes miles away, and they want to renovate a lot of the buildings. But this has to be done with great care, of course. There are certainly modern sections in Hanoi with the new shopping malls and high-rise buildings that resemble any contemporary city in the world. But for the visitor, you're probably not going to be very attracted to that kind of thing. You'd rather see the authentic, the old-fashioned, the real Hanoi, the old Vietnam. And that's what we have today in the Old Quarter. And now we're gonna take you on a walking tour through a variety of lanes in this fascinating neighborhood. We're in the center of the old quarter of Hanoi in Hongdao Street. This old quarter was formed way back in the 11th century when King Li Tai To decided that Hanoi would become the capital of Vietnam. This is Hongdao Street, one of the oldest in all of Vietnam and it goes right through the middle of the old quarter and divides it in two parts. The old quarter is often known as the 36 streets, but in fact now there are more than 36 streets, but the core of the old quarter remains in these original streets and lanes. Well, you're going to see that walking through the streets of the old quarter is a little bit of an adventure in itself with all of the motor scooters buzzing this way and that and cross-weaving traffic. They don't have any traffic lights at the intersections. There are some crosswalks, but you'll notice that cars don't really stop for you in a crosswalk. They just drive around you. The old quarter is very much a mixed-use district where people live here, they work here, they play here. It's a vibrant community. There are many kinds of shops here and Hongdao Street is mostly clothing shops and there's also a variety of other goods. There's fabrics, there's baskets, there's food stores and then of course the side streets have their various specialties. Most of the clothes for sale here are made in Vietnam. 
Some come from China, from the Philippines, even from America, but mostly it's locally produced. And the quality of clothing produced in Vietnam is very good. And for the foreign visitor, the price is quite reasonable, especially when you're buying domestic goods inside the country. There's no doubt that clothing is a very smart thing to purchase when you're in Vietnam. Bookstores are incredibly popular here. Now, you're probably not going to be purchasing books in Vietnamese, but they do have some in English. It's just fascinating to check out the busy scene at these bookstores. It's a great place to appreciate how much the Vietnamese value education. There's something special about the naming of the streets in the old quarter. Most of the streets here start with the word hung, which can be translated as shop or street. And the next word is the name of the service or the location of the street or the product. For example, Hung Dao Street used to be a place for the trading of silk. A lot of silk shops right along here. And even today, you can find some beautiful textile and fabric stores. It's, silk is a traditional product of Vietnam and it's very famous for foreigners to purchase. There's a really special technique in the local manufacturing of silk. And you can visit some silk villages on the outskirts of the city if you really want to see how the people produce it. While the prices here are attractive for the visitor, they're actually a little bit higher in the old quarter than you'll find in the rest of the town because, after all, this is the tourism area. So locals would tend to shop more outside the old quarter and let the tourists roam freely and spend their money here in the quaint old quarter surroundings. And don't hesitate to do some bargaining. It's all part of the routine here. You might get 20% off or 30% or 40%, depending on how much stuff you're buying, of course. But yeah, make an offer. See how far down you can get them. They're still gonna make a profit off of you. When you come back to this same street for the night market on the weekend evenings, you'll find there are stalls right in the middle of the road going for about a kilometer. And those prices are a little better than you get in the shops because they're not paying any rent. And so at the night market, you're going to see the young locals out shopping. The students are there. It's really much more of a local scene. You'll see more of the local Vietnamese than tourists at the night market, which makes it really a lot of fun for the visitor to come and enjoy. Another way tourists can get around is in this electronic buggy ride. It produces no pollution and it's nice and quiet. We'll take you on one of those rides in another Hanoi segment. This is Basket Street, Hangbo, but they don't sell any baskets here. Even though the streets are named or were named after the products they sell, but nowadays we just don't see baskets. There's clothing stores here on Basket Street. Instead, the baskets are being sold in the market down the road that opened in 1954, Dong Song Market. But meanwhile, this street is so fascinating because along with clothing, there's accessories, there's some shoes, there's hats, there's fabrics. There's all kinds of things available for sale in these very alluring open shop fronts. The motorcycles often have two or three people on board. And once in a while, you'll see a family with as many as five or it's possible six people on board. But you're not actually allowed to have more than two people on a motorcycle. And you also have to wear a helmet. From 2008, a law was passed and all motorcycle riders, drivers have to wear helmets. And they really do follow that law. Although many of these helmets look like they're more for fashion than for safety. Most of the buildings keep their original forms, which date back 80 years, 90 years, back to the time of the French occupation. And you can see that the architecture has some similarities from the French influence. In this area of the old quarter, the property is very expensive, the most expensive in all of Hanoi. And people live and sell in the same building. There'll be 
living upstairs and their shop is down on the ground floor. So it's a very busy and expensive place. They make use of every inch of land in the old quarter. And even though the buildings are not high rise or even more than three stories, four stories high, the people are packed in here with great density. If you enjoy people watching, this is a friendly and safe place to do it with unlimited opportunities. There are parts of town that are far less crowded than these narrow alleys of the old quarter, especially along the shores of Wonkin Lake. Every morning, the locals come out and dance and exercise and have a great time in a green park that runs around the lake. We'll be showing you a lot more scenes around the lake in another episode, so you might want to subscribe so you can be notified as we upload the new programming. And then we ran into a group of friendly young students and had a brief chat with them. What are you, students? Uh, tour guide. Tour guide, you're yeah. study, studying. Tour guide. It's going to be tour guide. <laughs> They're going to be tour guides. So you're, are you learning English? We are learning Chinese. No. Oh, learning Chinese. Okay. But I'll put you on uh, YouTube. Where are you from? Uh, Hawaii. Hawaii? Hawaii, America. Oh, Hawaii. You know Hawaii? Honolulu. Honolulu. Waikiki. Uh, we, we, we are going uh, on a ship. Bye. Bye. With a smart young generation like this coming up, it looks like the future of Vietnam is in very good shape. Tourism in Hanoi is booming, with over 14 million tourists a year coming in. Now, 12 million of those are domestic tourists, fellow Vietnamese traveling and exploring and appreciating their capital city of Hanoi, while two million visitors a year are international tourists. And it has been showing significant growth every year in tourism. For example, last year, tourists from Korea increased by 50%. Tourists from Singapore increased by 50%. From Japan, there was a 32% increase and so on. Big gains. And these tourism numbers are expected to continue growing this year, they may have as many as 16 million tourists. Again, most of those are domestic, perhaps 14 million are coming from within the country of Vietnam. Hanoi has been ranked very highly among the cities of Asia. It's in the top 10 destinations, according to uh, Smart Travel Tourist Magazine. They did a survey of their 5 million readers and of their journalists worldwide and found that Hanoi was ranked number six among the top 10 destinations in Asia. Number one was Bali. Number two was Phuket, Thailand. Number three, Hong Kong. And number four, Angkor in Cambodia and the Maldives. Then Bangkok and then Hanoi. So this puts this city up in a very high category of attractive destinations. And from the visuals, you can see why. We have a lot more programs about Hanoi on our website, tourvideos.com, which also has hundreds of movies about other great places in the world.